Crusty piece. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't get much nicer in terms of crusty than that, does it? Well, yeah. I notice that you're carrying it under your arm and not no. using the attached handle. You'll, you'll see in a minute that the uh, the guitar's fared slightly better than the uh, the case has, so you know, maybe, I'll, so, yeah. maybe I'll treat you to a new case. I'm excited to see this. There she is. Oh, yeah. Nice bit of uh, case <laughs> modifications there. So, well, is, so as long as the guitar has been better looked after than the case, has. like you say. But I have to keep it, uh, the, the D and the G uh, tuned down, or at least the, uh, the pegs flat there, because as you can see, over the years where it's been kept in tune, oh, yeah. the, uh, the, those tuning pegs have worn away at, the, at the, uh, the lining inside the case. Well, these are the foibles that people pay good money for. Well, yeah. So that's one advantage of the reissue a good case mm -hmm. so this is a original 1964 335 we've just purchased it a couple of weeks ago from well basically indirectly from the original owner and um yeah i think we're just gonna try the uh, the pepsi challenge aren't we Indeed, with, yeah. uh, with your guitar let's see right, the let's get your guitar so, the present day so that's the custom shop reissue of what this guitar is yep. basically so. 64. Stick name on the back. Excuse the strap, but yeah. this is going to be interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I played it, played it already a few times at some serious volume, and kind of things that I noticed was you know real harmonic kind of almost pickups are almost microphonic, so almost going to that like harmonic feedback that's almost kind of uncontrollable so you have to watch the the gain levels a bit with it but yeah it that's does part of the fun well it's part of the fun but i haven't actually compared it to a to a brand new one yet anyway so right, hoping well. i'm not left pig sick afterwards anyway but that's, uh, but yes yeah, no, that now. is it so this was a uh, an original import guitar that would have been sold in the uk which is why it has the uh, the selma case it's got the selma guarantee card so this would have had the uh the original paperwork from the first owner with their warranty on there with seal number and everything all on there that was originally so this guitar was purchased in manchester and spent its whole life up in newcastle so pretty cool pretty cool info and little Old bits and pieces guitar. like this the original <coughs> string tips guitar player guide very nice and i've never actually seen one of those a, uh, an original Gibson, uh, Gibson hash pipe. Oh, it's making me go Dutch. <laughs> uh, a truss rod adjuster, I mean. Pipe, is it? Yeah, it's, it's nice, yeah. a truss rod adjuster. <laughs> nice. Excellent. So there you go. All right, well, let's plug them in. Let's plug them the in, best. see what they're like. Get okay, hello, ladies and gents. Jack here, and John has kindly joined me today to do something quite special. Um, you'll have heard a little bit of the, the tidbits in the introduction there as John was introducing mm -hmm. what this is going to be. Basically, if you've seen our videos before, you may recall that I last year purchased this amazing Custom Shop 64 335 reissue because it came in and seen a few of these before, but not too many. And when they do, they really make an impact. And this one to me at the time just looked the most like what I had in my head an original looking like, certainly because of the fading of the cherry. Then I plugged it in, it sounded great and all that. So a year on, not to be outdone, John has found an original 64335 and oh, there you go. what better opportunity than to put the two of them together and see kind of not only how close the custom shop gets but what extra you get when you go for the vintage. Yeah. I think that's kind of the idea, yeah, right? I think I think with um with this one I'm really proud to, you know, own this one and put this into the the peach collection. I think uh with with a lot of the guitars that I've bought over the last few years they kind of everything's just come together at the right time yeah. i think with with vintage guitars if you go out looking for stuff and you you know you get desperate or you want to rush these things you can end up making the wrong decision this guitar came at the right time you know it had the right amount of miles on the clock the you know the condition and everything 
was just kind of what I wanted. Yeah. And I saw it, it just went live um, on the website and uh, pretty much, you know, put in an offer for so it. So you bought it online? Yeah, I unseen. bought it. Yeah, basically. I bought it from, uh, from ATB Guitars um, down uh, near Gloucester. So they're down that way. Great guys. Uh, dealt with them before in the past and I always have a great selection of vintage guitars but I saw it on uh, on their Instagram page and uh, sent them across an offer a little bit of argy bargy yeah and to be uh, expected, of course. yeah to be expected of course but um, <clears throat> we got there in the end and I think everybody was happy so yeah. that was fine so I drove down and picked it up and um, yeah and it kind of when I got there and played it it did everything that you know I thought it was going to do, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it just it's just a lovely, great vintage guitar. It is fantastic. So you've had that a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple now. of weeks now. Yeah, and I know you said you haven't played it too much, but you've sort of broken yeah, spent, it in. I've spent a lot of time, um, you know, playing it acoustically up in the office and stuff, but I haven't done a huge amount. Uh, me and Joel did a bit where I think probably the day after we got it, just tried it out through the the normal Studio Z that you mm. you normally use. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just it sounded great in isolation. You know, it's a great guitar sound, but you know, it'd be interesting to see. We've not, I've not compared it to another three three five yet. Yeah. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see how it does compare to you know what is supposed to be the exact replica. True. Yeah. So you haven't seen or played this guitar. No, I might since have played I it. it. Yeah, I might have played it just before you bought it. And but... I haven't had my hands on that guitar yet. No. So we'll do a little bit of a switcheroo. So John's got his two rock rig with fantastic selection of pedals yep. on the floor as well yep. for those who can't see it's Klon and a King Tone Blues Power yeah so John will play both guitars through his rig I've got a Friedman small box 50 I'm going to use the same pedal so kind of you know Brit amp and a USA style amp yeah. um, and obviously different playing styles and stuff so that's kind of the idea it's not to declare a winner either because I want to kind of get rid of this I'm sure you probably do as well this stigma that vintage yeah. is best because Although that is a stunning instrument, this isn't any worse. They're just different things. Well, that guitar will play better than what this does because this has still got you know the original frets. It's uh, you know it's got a fair bit of wear you know up up the court you know the cord end. It's got some uh, you know a bit of meat up there, but mm. you know a new. I, I don't care what anybody says. A new you know well-made guitar that's had a Plex setup on it is mm. always going to play. Probably yeah. superior to a guitar that's never had a setup since, you know. But they're just not equal, are they? You know, well, they, no. People kind of put it always in the context of how it feels to play and the playing experience, but that is a whole different purchasing experience yeah. and ownership experience. I'm sure you will play and love that guitar, but it's not like you're going to take it out and gig. But the whole thing with the setup and these frets and everything like that, it does make you play differently. So it'd be interesting to see when you play it being you know used to your guitar when you play this one yeah you know the the, the sort of style in which you play and you might be a little bit more kind of um held back a little bit with with uh, you know digging in quite so hard because it is just a different sort of playing experience well i'll, I'll be held back because that yeah, guitar well, is no, a lot more valuable for, yeah than you go for it so but, but um i'm yeah, interested well, to see i'm sure hopefully you guys are as well so without further ado let's get into some playing yeah well i've got uh the, the two rocks set up and I've got it kind of set pretty clean. I'm going to use the blues power just to give you a uh, kind of a natural little bit of a pushed up, uh, kind of pushed break up. And then I'll just hit the clon as well, just for a little bit extra kind of sustain. So I'll just play completely clean on the neck pickup to mm. start with. It's alive, isn't it? bright but kind of uh, still really rich sounding, and um, it's probably more the way that I play, but it's still got that kind of almost snap to it uh, on the neck pickup.
just adding a small amount of drive from the blues power now. Going there the goes. feedback there. So neck pickup. And then you've got the bridge there as well. And then if you roll that tone back a little bit and bring in the clon, that's when you're getting kind of closer into the woman tone kind of. Or closer to kind of a grissom vibe with a little bit more. That is so good. Yeah, I mean, it's so, just, you can let the guitar do the talking for you with that one. You just sit there. Yeah. You don't even have to try, do you? Great if you like playing in G, which I do. Yes. So, there you go. so I've got some questions for you. Okay. But before we do, yeah. maybe do exactly the same okay. kind of thing yeah, on this. Right, yeah. I'll just pop that over here for a sec. So I go back to that clean, that clean sound there. This is where I get nervous. Don't be nervous, boy. Let's see if it likes playing in G. <laughs> Not what too do far apart, are they? So, so what I wanted to ask you first was, does your initial sort of prediction ring true? Do you think where you said this would probably be easier to play? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, just when you dig in, you just feel like you can just push a little bit harder with your right hand. Anyway, that's that's immediately kind of when I start playing. It, it seemed you know, like you were playing a bit more comfortably. Yeah, maybe on this. Yeah, we just I'm just you know you just get more used to playing, you know modern guitars with modern setups guess, and bigger yeah. frets and stuff yeah. as well but but yeah i mean it sounds like um this sounds a bit kind of a little bit more powerful a little bit fuller sounding yeah that kind of bit more got a bit more kind of wire and spank to it which works well for me yeah so um, pick up white so i think these are the 
custom buckers, I believe. I can't remember actually what's what's in these guitars, but we'll, they're kind of proprietary. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll double check for, and put a uh, three, three, put, five, put the spec up in the link. But yeah, yeah. So and then you've got real un- PAFs in. Yeah, it. so it's an unpotted original yeah. uh, PAF style pickup, basically. So, and they're up against the real the deal. The original, you know. Um, yeah. Yep. Whatever was in there from '64. Yeah. So, yeah. So to me, it kind of sounded like your guitar has a lot more of that zingy, yeah, open kind of sound. And I think maybe with you kind of being predominantly, from what I know you as anyway, a Fender player. Mm-hmm. Would you say that's kind of like the ultimate Gibson? What well, probably a for me? Yeah. I mean, for, straight away it has a little bit more of that spank and kind of. Um, you know, chime. I listen to you know when you listen to like uh, Donny Hathaway or or any of those of those guys from like the seventies or even the late sixties who had just like absolutely really shit hot, <laughs> pardon mm. my language. You know, guys playing guitar, the rest of the band, and they you can hear they're playing really nice soulful rhythm. Yeah. You know, and you can hear it's that like two pickup sound of either a Telecaster or a, or a three three five. It's got that little bit of like kind of chink behind mm-hmm. the note sort of thing that um, it's hard to describe. You know. Um, these subtle kind of tonal differences but you know for me that that guitar almost sounds like an old yeah. record you know it's got that sort of uh, you know retro so what do you vibe think, to do you it. think it's the pickups or do you think it's the oh. the older wood or kind of a combination yeah. of everything I mean, it, it, you know, with a lot of these things you can take you know did you try two of these when you, when you I didn't this at one? the time but I well, I've played obviously a few of the reissues over time and that one stood out to me as being the richest yeah like the other ones sort of had more of that uh, maybe some of them sounded fatter. None of them quite had the same glassiness no, that your guitar's no, got. No, I just, I think but, it is, I mean, whether it came out of the factory sounding like that, but I just think over time, like with the old Strats, they kind of, they, they seem to just lose some of that power, don't they? Yeah. They've still got that, you know, inherent single coil tone and, you know, when we've played a few of the old Strats, you know, some of these guys over the back here, they've got that kind of um, richness and that brightness that's really clear and present but it's never harsh. It's yeah. got that sort of sound to it. So yeah. um, it's kind of where I think like two rock amps make the most sense as well. Yeah. Because because there's so much harmonic information from the guitar. Yeah. A newer guitar like that maybe kind of gives the amp way too much to deal with, mm. and that's why sometimes with a high headroom amp like that, a new yeah. guitar can sometimes sound a little bit not sterile, but just too much. Yeah. With your guitar, it sounds, you hear all it the does, intricacies. It just, I mean, how can you say something sounds older? But it just reminds me of a sound on a record. Yeah. It's that sort of sound, isn't it? So yeah. I think, um, you know, we're, we're talking about something that's, you know, a couple of years old versus something that was made in 1964. You know, mm. the blueprint is there. I know on this guitar, um, they they actually uh, modeled and scanned the neck from Cesar's own guitar that he owns, a oh, 64, right. as okay. well. So this is... Well, thank um, you, Cesar. For yeah. loaning your guitar. Well, there you go. And uh, so basically, it was his guitar that right. that this was, uh, you know, kind of reverse engineered from. So sure. I think, um, you know, you could take two of these, you know, two brand new ones, as you know, like when we get Les, the, all yeah. these big Absolutely. shipments of Les Pauls in, and I come in and say, oh, you know, we had that big batch of 59s in Jack. Was there one there that was like, you know, really good one? And you're always like, oh, yeah, there's one. There's always a standard. But it shouldn't be because, you know, they've all got the same things going on under the hood, haven't they? So. But, you know, the standout is going to be different for everyone, isn't it? Because some yeah, people... I mean, some people will listen to this and go, oh, much fuller sound. You know, I really prefer yeah. that, you know, that kind of thicker, richer mm. kind of uh, tone. Uh, but which I wish that. I could say that's me. But yeah. I do. I, I haven't played them yet, but... Well, I've got a surprise. No, I haven't, Jack. <laughs> You're not having it. It's still mine. That'd be very nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, aside from everything else, the appointments are pretty much the same. Oh, it looks it's fantastic. the same I mean, kind of pickup. Like, let me just... Let me just pull it out here as You've well. You've got the nylon saddles, same pot values, same obviously, like you said, dimensions. That's that a great job from Gibson, isn't it? I mean, you look at some of the um, the sunburst finishes that you see come out of um, a lot of factories and you see them against the original sunburst guitars from Fender and stuff yeah. like that, and they never look quite right. I mean, that is The color's pretty close, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. And my bugbear is always the pickups. Yeah. Because I never feel like they make the pickups look like original ones do but these actually they're not far off each other you can still tell that that's the mm. old guitar yeah but yeah i mean this this guitar's probably got if you look at the new murphy lab guitars this would probably be classed as one of the ultra light aged finishes because yeah. it's just got a few uh light nitro cracks in there 
whereas your guitar was VOS, wasn't it? It's a VOS it was, finish, but I yeah. mean, just after a year or so of playing it, I've probably done as much, maybe not quite as much. It's not got into any checking yet, has it? I don't think. Yeah, not but. quite, but in terms of little nicks and things, it's they're probably on about the same level mm. now. So that's mm. been really well looked after. Yeah. But um, I kind I kind of think like this guitar may may suit the the Friedman rig a little bit more. Do you want to try them both through the let's two try it first? You are Tom Morello. Yeah, someone like that. Um, so we've done the switcheroo. I'm playing through the Friedman now. Um, very it, different instantly. Way more honky, isn't it? Like yeah. honky, mid, very strident mid-range sound. That's always been what I've liked. Mm. So that's why just hearing your guitar straight yeah. away through your amp yeah. appealed to me a little bit yeah. more than this one. But this kind of works when you've got a little bit more compression in the amp. So like I said earlier about the two rock being very revealing, mm. and that's why it suits that. The Friedman being a little bit more forgiving, maybe those EL 34s compressing a bit, and just that little snippet there with the Klon. It kind of works for this, and I yeah. guess that's why these modern boutique amp companies do what they do and they tweak vintage designs slightly to be a little bit more forgiving. Mm. Um, but yeah, so if I just play through a little bit more, I'll turn the Klon off. So I'm using the, um, the plexi channel of the amp, so it's kind of got a little bit of dirt to it, but not. Too much. Like, yeah, roll, roll the volume back just for like a good, see what the like clean type sort of roll Let's back see. clean so sound is. We'll start with eight on the volumes. So it already comes alive, even when there's not a lot of gain. Mm. It's quite loud in here, granted, but the beauty of these kind of guitars is that you don't, you don't have to work at it to get the, the feedback happening. If that's what you want and you're prepared to try and control it, they kind of give you that straight away. Um, that'll be exaggerated even more when I turn this clon on. So start on the bridge. <laughs> So it's got mid for days, hasn't it? It does. It's definitely fat enough. Yeah. So with that said, I'll plug that one in. All right, and this is going to be a, a squealy, squealy beast. Yeah. Excuse the pop. There wasn't one. 
Okay, thank you. Similarish weights as well. Yeah, they are actually. I, kind of, I expected this to be a lot lighter actually, but yeah. it does have some, some heft to it. So, okay, I'll start with the clon off, start on the bridge. Rolled down a little bit. Quite like it, you know. Sorry yeah. if that dragged on a bit. Yeah. But you was in the zone there, boy, wasn't you? That we just uh, there is a difference. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying it's worse. But perhaps you could leave a comment. Maybe you could decide. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's quite marked. I think did they're going to tell us anyway. Did you feel that there was a big difference here? Well, it's a, I told you it makes you play different as well. It definitely does. But even from like the first, you've got to work harder. I, I think you've got to work harder because there's less, a lot less power, a lot less bass. Yeah. in the sound but ultimately it gives you a really killer neck pickup as well oh then as soon as i switch to the neck with that clon it's like the guitar just sort yeah. of came alive <clears throat> but this bridge sounds like a p90 to me yeah which no modern humbucker quite gets no um i don't know why that is because i think the manufacturers do understand that is it maybe that players don't want maybe players think they want this and actually they don't yeah i think it's there's, i don't know there's you know, if you go and put that sound in a brand new guitar, I think a lot of people would just be like, mm, that's weak or you yeah. know, it doesn't have the power I need to push the amp. You know, when you accept it for what it is and embrace it for what, what that's how it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. then I think it's uh, just like a different playing experience altogether as well. Yeah. But yeah, you just, see what I mean? You know, it's like these different guitars, you know, two, two of essentially the same guitar with you know, uh, a different tone and a different setup just makes you play in a different way, completely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, on paper, very, very similar. And maybe we could be overthinking it a little bit, but just going off the initial reaction you get when you pick up these guitars, yeah, they are very different. And it, it is such a strange thing, because your eyes deceive you, but as soon as you get them well, just in... Do, why, don't, why don't you do just like a quick, a quick switcheroo yeah. everything on 10 on the you know no no you don't need the pedal on but do everything on 10 on the guitar and just switch between yeah, a few okay. of the positions well i've done a lot of um just do like noodling. a twenty. yeah so we'll go for some chords yeah do like a 20 second thing and try and do something similar on both guitars yeah okay all right start on the neck on this one and move to the bridge and then hit that guitar
wasn't 20 seconds. <laughs> Near enough. Okay, Let's see if I can remember what I did. I'll turn the tone up first. Yeah. That guitar sounds like it's got like a, an EP booster on it or something like that. Just it does, yeah. Giving it just smoothing out the doesn't high have end. the same bounce that no. that does. And I guess it, it's kind of like the single coil. Mm. That's the only thing I can kind of give an accurate comparison to, is that that just feels like that lower output, more dynamic, yeah. single coil kind of approach. But it's still a humbucker. It's a weird head scratcher. Mm. Yeah, this is a it, great sound as well. Yeah, but I mean tonally, it's like <clears> you know, it's got all the same uh you know characteristics of the guitar but it just sounds like there's just kind of more output doesn't mm. there yeah to me that sounds like um you know you're using something with a very slight boost on like an ep boost that's got a very natural little bit of high end roll off mm. you know no extra mids or anything like that just a little bit yeah, of extra, just bigger yeah uh, maybe i've got to lower these pickups or something i don't know but i've got some tweaks to make because i want this to sound like that and i don't know if you'd say the same well, maybe the we could um no maybe we could uh you know, that's a video for another day. Could see be. How, yeah. See how we can. Uh, see how close we can get. Yeah, yeah. Put a couple of uh, EMGs in there. <laughs> with no battery. Yeah. Well, until that happens, thank you very much for watching, folks. Let us know in the comments what you think. I'm sure there'll be some extensive opinions on this subject, but maybe there was a clear cut winner to you. So let us know your pick. And neither of us will be away. offended, will we? No, because I'm very happy with this guitar. I'm sure you're very happy yeah. with that guitar but I will still find a way to get that guitar off you at some point, I think, maybe. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, folks. If you've enjoyed this, leave a like down below. Like I say, comment down there with your thoughts as well. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, ring the bell so you're notified whenever we post in the future. And if you want to find out any more information about our wonderful shop, you can click the link in the description and head to peachguitars.com. So thank you very much for watching. Take care. We'll see you very soon. Thank you. Ciao.